at the time the Alawai Canal was built, there really were no environmental laws. I mean, the laws that we have in place today to not only protect the environment but to be aware of cultural sites are very strong. In 1920, there were no such laws. The primary purpose for the dredging of the canal, the landfill that followed, was for economic reasons. It can't be said that people in the 1920s knew that when this was developed this way, it would turn into a gold mine, because really the property values took a really long time, decades, to gradually get up to where they were really valuable. So, yes, economic justification, but no, you can't read too much into it because, of course, the values really weren't there at the time. We can't judge it based on the values now as to what the values were when the LOI was constructed. A good chunk of Waikiki right at that same, right about that same time period had been claimed by the federal government either through condemnation or through people actually selling out uh, to create Fort DeRussi. So you've got the territorial government, you've got the federal government all saying this is what we have to do to the Waikiki district. That's an unstoppable force. When the canal was constructed, initially it was planned to be a complete circuit so that it would have been dug all the way out to the end to reach the beach, so that it would have been, in theory, fully open to circulation on both ends from the ocean. And that was considered to be uh, a more healthful situation where there, it wouldn't become polluted. Well, they never did complete that other end going out to the ocean where Kapahulu Avenue is now. There was some concern that the water was going to become stagnant to a degree. At the same time, the water flow through the streams down into the canal was going to be constant. So it wasn't seen as being a completely stagnant, completely unmoving, unhealthy move of massive water. The film that we have at Bishop Museum is probably from 1924, and it shows people swimming for recreation in the Alawai Canal. And again, to us today, that's unimaginable because we think of that water as polluted, and it is, but it wasn't always that way. Frankly, until I saw this film, I didn't really know that people had gone swimming in the Alawai Canal, so I was surprised when I first saw it. But you can see that there was that idea of using the canal for recreation. When the canal was first built, it didn't have the finished retaining wall and the steps that it has on it today. So in the film, you see people clambering sort of um, uncomfortably over just this rocky edge of the canal to get down into it to swim. As a very little kid, I always remembered looking at the stairways that are built into the embankment of the canal and thinking, whoever goes down those stairways, do they ever swim? What are those even there for? Well, you know, initially it probably was thought that people would use those stairs for possibly swimming or getting in and out of boats. And it's never really happened to that degree. But yes, people did used to swim in that thing. There's the whole sewer system problem but the sewer system is separate from the Alawai Canal. The fact that the canal had to be used in an emergency as an emergency uh, sewer outflow was something, again, that couldn't have been anticipated. Sewer system put in in the 1920s or even later was not intended necessarily to take on more than 100,000 people who are now in Waikiki.